Thank you all for tuning in. The following is a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. Be sure to like, comment, and share. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you've got to do to kick that algorithm into gear and help us reach more people. Yes, it is I, your humble host, Bill Hatch the Third, coming to you live from the Palatial Home Studios of Bald Spots Productions here in the beautiful city of Santa Ana, California. Joining me in studio, as per the usual, is my friend, my brother in Christ, the disembodied voice of Rudy. Hi, everybody. I love you all. Welcome, welcome with the Lord. And joining us from a more than acceptable safe social distance through the miracle of telephony is my father, Chaplain Bill Hatch. How you doing, Pop? Doing very well. And greetings to my fellow Bible inquisitors. Today, I am calling in from Branson, Missouri, where we are... Eileen and I are sharing a timeshare with our youngest son, his wife, and two munchkins. Oh. And boy, can they ever be noisy when they get up at <laughs> 6.30 in the morning, whether it's a school day or not. <laughs> and it didn't matter how late they were up last night either. <laughs> That's wow. just the way it was. Uh, at least Kevin but doesn't I have the trouble. It's of... okay. At least Kevin doesn't have all the trouble of waking up somebody who doesn't want to wake up in the morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Actually, I, ha I have an interesting story. I was speaking with a, uh, with a preschool teacher last night uh, from my church, and he was saying that uh, because of a Supreme Court decision, they can technically no longer wake up kids after their naps. At the at the scheduled end of the nap, really? if uh, if the kid wants to sleep, the kid has to be allowed to sleep. And uh, he said that's going to be a problem because they use the room where they nap for the playground, <laughs> for the play area, and uh, for the kids after their nap. Yep. <laughs> so uh, somebody's going to get woken been, up. <laughs> they've been doing that elsewhere. I don't know about California, but here in Missouri. Uh, it is the fact that if one of the kids sleeps past the structured nap time, they, mm -hmm. in fact, let them stay asleep. Uh, they don't quite have the same spatial problem, I guess. Uh, you know, too high a price for property out in California. Yeah. We have a lot more less expensive property here in Missouri, I guess. So they yes, can so. make bigger child care centers. <laughs> More spacious, I should say. More spacious, yes. There you go. Yeah, we just fill them for, full of more kids. <laughs> That's highly probable. Uh, and we won't get into that discussion anymore. Nope, nope. Because you're getting ready to leave. There, I spilled the yes. beans. I know. And, uh, yeah, and that's why we're going to be dark next uh, Saturday. So, Indeed. this coming Saturday. Next Saturday is coming Saturday, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we have a lot of great material to go through. We're, uh, we're not going to hit a gritty minute today. Um, because, Although he uh, is here. He is here, but, uh, uh, but we're just not doing the, uh, the minute today. So, uh, sorry. Um, so, uh, so let's get straight into it. We are discussing Dear God, I Have a Question by Catherine Slattery. And uh, uh, we are going to ask the question, what is the Bible? Indeed. It's amazing how wide a variety of answers that you'll get. Mm -hmm. Such as, it's just another book. Right. Wrong. Yep. <laughs> Very uh, it's wrong. a bunch of different books written by different people, and it's over 2,000 years old, so we don't need to look at it at all. Don't need to pay no. attention. That's Again, wrong. the word wrong comes to my mind. Yeah. Um, for me and a whole lot of other people, it is the most important book in the world. Right. It is, uh, the book it, of, it is both the book of books and a book of books. Yep. <laughs> and the reason why is because the Bible is true, living word 
uh, holy word of God. We get to get into a whole lot of descriptions of what that means now. I mean, we know that it's 66 books written by about 40 different people. Bill, you can divide them up and tell them a little more. I don't want to just do all of this. Well, uh, it was written over the course of, what, about 3,000 years? Yeah. Give or take? About 3,000 years worth of, uh, worth of writing. Um, let's see. Uh, it is written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Yep. Right? Yeah. And uh, let's see. Um, and at this point in time, apparently it's been translated into over 2,000 different languages. Wow. Including <laughs> Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but originally that's how it was done. Okay. Um, the the reference to it being inspired, the inspired word of God. Yes, we have to be able to look and say, well, what exactly is are we talking about here? Right. What, well, what does that mean? What does it mean? Especially when you get into God breathed, God breathed into somebody's ear. Several people's ears, actually. But some. that means that it was God guiding these authors to what to write down. Right. Now, there are a few translation errors that we believe we have that make it very difficult at times. But God apparently gave these men, maybe one woman, uh, <laughs> the ability to write down God's story in creation. Okay. God has a whole lot more than just our creation here on good old mother earth. Okay. There's a whole lot more to God than that, but the Bible is God's story in our creation and being. The yes. He wanted takes us faith. to know. I'm sorry. The truth he wanted us to know through the Bible. Yes. And he doesn't give just all the answers. Mm -hmm. Some of it absolutely has to be lived by faith. We're told that in Hebrews. I think mm -hmm. it's chapter 11, verse 1, uh, where it talks about faith is what is not seen. Right. And being able to say we have to have faith to make it work. Now, some people got to see it up close and personal. I believe still that we see miracles today, yes, but not quite the way we have have it here in the Holy Bible. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is inspired. And that's important for us to see because when that was written by Paul, the only scriptures they had were the Old Testament's. Uh, but it's, we have this, it is forward, and it covers, like Bill said, the writing period was about 3,600 years. Uh, it is a collection of true life stories. We faithfully believe this because this is the best documented book in the Bible. And yes, Bill, there's no way to just go page by page. Yeah. We have to be able to jump around. Right. Uh, but stories about kings and queens, angels, prophets, and that's people who preach the word of God primarily. Uh, there are letters which are called epistles at times. So hopefully we'll get you some definitions today that will help you better understand the Bible. Uh, now, there's, there is a big discussion I'll say discussion that uh, going on about uh, ongoing about uh, um, well, I guess you could say whether the book whether the Bible is the Word of God or contains the Word of God. Um, there's also to what degree it is factual as opposed to truthful um, and uh, and whatnot. And uh, we may get into some of that, but some of that's getting out into the weeds. Um, well. I, I can I can get into it now 
because I'm pretty solid lined. The Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. I believe the Bible is the word of God. I really do believe that. And you're, you know, no one's going to really be able to talk me out of that. Uh, there are some 18,000 manuscripts that have been found. They're not whole manuscripts. Some of them are just tiny parts of parchment, but it all seems to show a good progression of both the Old and, the, well, the Old Testament in particular. And that's only because of God's blessing. Uh, you've heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yep, they were, here. in fact, found in clay jars, quite accidentally, a boy throwing rocks, to be precise, yep. a shepherd uh, just throwing rocks. And uh, nonetheless, this was in 1947. And these manuscripts are still being translated and re-gone over, but they keep showing uh, how accurate the Old Testament that we have today through King James and forward, actually through the Gutenberg Bible forward, and we yeah. talk about that later too. Uh, but all those writings of the Old Testament uh, except for one thing, which is which is which has become being verified all the time. Yeah, there is, and there will always be. Yes, and we'll always have problematic because Satan will always want to challenge anything of God. Right. Trying to distract is his implementation. Oh, excuse me, I have to go answer the door. Put it on pause, Bill. Yep. Coming, coming, coming. Howdy, I'm here to be Although Monday will probably want it back. So oh, the uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the grandkids will be leaving Monday. Get in and get themselves locked in. Yeah, if you're on the line, switch them to call and ask me Monday. Episode so five. So it's weird. <laughs> No, I'll say I'll write it down, but I got something that's going on. No. Yeah. Okay, obviously, here's the second one. Is there anything else that we want to make notes for right now, dear? Oh, last night. Put that chair against it so the three year old, because she knows how to lock it. Oh, gee. Right, but they go out for that. Huh, yeah, that anyway. Yeah, that was one of those. It didn't take Yeah, we'll get that. Yeah, yeah. 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 My name's Robo, I'll be here today. Uh, no, 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 no. No top and No. Also, when I was talking about working with you guys, in fact, no way to talk, I was working with you But I would be a good guy. I understand. I'm 100% my fault. Thank you, sir. Coming back, Bill. Okay. Hold on. Uh, sorry about that. Pause. That's all right. Um, I'll actually just edit out the chunk that uh, that uh, you were. That came gone. through? Yep. Because I can't okay. actually pause the recording. Uh, I'm ready for page 64. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, it is the, the Bible is the living word of God. Amen. Um, 
Let's see. Sometimes the Bible is referred to as scripture, which means holy writings. And uh, let's see. I think we got everything else that was on page 63. I think um, so. Yeah. And we already got some of on 64, but we're going to do it from a different angle anyway. Yep. And that, sorry, folks, that means how did we get the Bible? Right. Uh, in ancient times, people did not know how to read and write. That, that invention had to come up later, as it were. So stories were handed down orally. And that's why we do have some things that get hard to figure out when it comes to translations. And what do they mean? Uh, but you know, anyway, I was, they... Um, I, you, I, you just reminded me of... Uh, um, have you seen the Book of Eli? Yes. Okay. Um, spoiler alerts. Uh, yeah, you know, but it's a good movie and you should see it. Um, but... Uh, um, it re, you re, what you just said reminded me of the outcome of that movie, which was uh, Eli making it to uh, Alcatraz Island, where a uh, where a society has been set up that is collect collecting the lost books of humanity, and uh, um, and he has read and reread his Bible so many times that he has it memorized. So even though the bad guy stole the book from him. Um, he still had the Bible in his head, and he was able to recite the Bible to the uh, to the people who were writing it down uh, just before he dies at the end. Um, yep. Of course, now, the, of course, the, the the plot hole in that in that movie is that even though he was citing the Bible in a more NIV type of way, the Bible he related to the people was the King James version. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, it's an interesting, uh, uh, and it's also so so far out there mm -hmm. because the Bible has been translated into over two thousand languages, yeah. and the premise of the movie was is that all evidence of the Bible had disappeared. Right, it had been destroyed intentionally. It, yeah, it has been disappeared, and it's like uh, no. That is simply not going to happen. But how did we get this Bible? Started off with oral and then started being written down. For us, it is believed the first five books of the Old Testament were written by Moses. Right. That may also be true of Job. We are not sure. But Job is also an older, uh, older event. Mm -hmm. Scholars it may, have now been, believe, it may have been written first in yeah. chronological order. They yeah. have. And we'll get to some chronology things in a while. But still, how did we get the Bible? After they did it orally, they started writing it down. And the first writing materials seem to have been the invention of papyrus paper. The first kind. And uh, we get to talk about that a whole lot with the next page. And we can go we back and these, forth. We, but we I like the these, fact. Uh, we don't have these oldest writings, however. No, we do not. Um, the, oldest, uh, the oldest writings of the Old Testament we have are, uh, um, are the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the oldest writings of the New Testament are somewhat newer than that. Like, uh, You're right. Like I apologize. I didn't finish that story or that explanation, did I? Oh. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947, 19... and they believe, believe, <laughs> they are somewhere around 300 years before Jesus. Right. So in what that we call the 400 years of silence from God to people. Which is also a misnomer, and you know we get so many rabbit trails. I don't want to do that. <laughs> right. But we have these papyruses, and because we have other things, the Phoenician city of Gilba Gabal. is where. I'm sorry. Gabal. All right, Gabal. Uh, but the Greek name for that city was Blos, and it 
stands for papyrus, uh, which is a grassy reed. Um, earliest form of paper was made from this. The word biblos or papyrus given, uh, which mean, in Greek means biblios. And I know all of our great scholars out there know that that's the Greek word for books, plural. Right. And then it developed later on, but they were written down on papyrus first. And then as other paper products developed, they changed those along. Uh, there was a difficulty though. Very few people could read back then. Right. It was usually kept for the rich. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the rich had or at least the powerful, I should say. Yeah. Well, the rich and powerful had the time during the day to learn to read. And uh, um, as opposed to the poor who had to start working at an early age. and um, That have may be part of it, but Some it part. certainly wasn't made available for everybody. Primarily scribes were the ones who could keep things going. I tell you, if you, if, if you uh, worked hard enough to be a scribe back in those days, you were on the upper echelon of income. Yeah. Um, yeah, writing took a long time to do and <clears throat> writing books because that's a lot of work yep. to do, especially if you're writing something holy like, uh, like the Bible. Um, you know, the... Uh, um, the, the Hebrews, even today, as they copy the Torah and uh, the, the Tanakh, um, have very many things, in, um, checks and balances in place to make sure that they copy exactly what, yes. they're, uh, what they've written. They have people who count the letters and, uh, um, and, uh, and double check and check and recheck and Yep. Just to make sure that the new copy has been, uh, yeah. If you ever look for a handwritten copy of the uh, of the Tanakh, or even just the Torah, they, they can get expensive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are very, indeed, very expensive. Yeah, uh, and they are also. And, and working it. I do you have a, a Bible handy, Bill? Uh, no, I usually use the. It, it's the really keyboard. okay. But see this one here. Sorry, wrong side. Mm -hmm. This Bible, you see how thick that binder is? Oh, yeah. Now imagine that they were all written out on scrolls by hand. Right. They would be huge. Uh, and, in fact, they are huge still if you are ever uh, able to see a Jewish synagogue and actually see the copies that they have still in scroll form. Right. Uh, one man really is going to hold them out like this next to his body and it's two scrolls uh, and unscrolling it is just mind boggling but yeah. that's the way it was kept until the Gutenberg uh, well, printing press no there were codexes before the uh, before the before the printing press uh, codexes are are multiple pages on the uh, multiple pages of text on the same piece of paper, um, but uh, it's more huh. in a book form. Um, okay, and so it's not quite a book, um, but it's uh, uh, but it's almost a book. It's a it's a stepping stone in the evolution right. of uh, of writing between scrolls. And, and I was action. certainly not thinking about Codex at all. I was just jumping to <laughs> Gutenberg because when it was first printed, it was two large volumes, unnumbered pages, and it was 1,282 pages in two volumes. It was yeah. huge. Yeah. But that was the first printed one. And I've, and seen, I mean, I've seen single pages of the Gutenberg Bible, um, but not the, yeah. uh, not the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. And certainly uh, I've never had the opportunity to touch one. I have only seen... Yeah. I have only, well, wait a minute. We were at, this, at the National Archives. I think we actually did see a Gutenberg well, they were, they when had you a whole, were younger, but whole maybe not. I don't remember. Maybe not. Uh, it really isn't relevant. If the, 
imagine 1,282 pages of going through the Bible without numbers and then take it back a step further when it was just the scrolls and the biblical story of Jesus being at a synagogue. And no chapters and and verses. Offered, yeah, no chapters, no verses back then. And he was able to open up to Isaiah at just the right spot, read the Bible, and sit down and talk about it as it was that he was fulfilling exactly what it said. It's just mind-boggling. Yeah. It's a great scene in The Chosen. Um, Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. But but speaking of, um, we, we mentioned that these things, these scrolls were very expensive. And so poorer uh, synagogues didn't have the entirety of the Tanakh available to them. They would have had the scrolls of Moses, the the Torah, and yes, uh, the, the books five of the law. Yeah, what we call the five first five books of our Bible is right. the Torah: Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the Tanakh, and would be the they, by the way, those synagogues uh, uh-huh. would do a circulating library. Right. But it it took a whole lot of trust, which Mm -hmm. is not too common uh, in biblical records. So we have that. But with the Gutenberg, it started getting smaller and smaller. And now because of study Bibles, it's getting bigger again. (laughs) Uh, Otherwise, the print is so much that me, I regularly use a magnifying glass. To try to get it to where I can read it more easily. Yeah, uh, it's also it's also gotten so that books are less are considerably less expensive than they were uh, than oh, scrolls yeah. were, um, and printing, they are they are free for the asking. And we'll mm-hmm. talk about that in another yeah. page or two. Um, the, uh, the invention of moving press was the single most important event in human history until the invention of the internet, and. Uh, um, and it allowed people to learn to read, which led to revolutions um, and uh, both uh, both physical, uh, you know, political revolutions and spiritual revolutions, um, because people were la- were able to read, learn to read not just the Bible but other books. Um, yeah. To uh, and people became more educated, which led to higher intelligence. Which led to so many things that we uh, that we probably take for granted in the uh, in the world today, including the internet, because there'd be no internet if people couldn't read. Um, and so, uh, um, so yeah, so it's uh, it, it's quite possibly the single most important uh, uh, invention, and uh, and it's been well used because well, we have copies of the Bible available uh, online and in print and. And uh, um, in 2,000 languages so that people around the world can, uh, can learn about God. Yep. Now, I s- skipped over it, and so I'm getting back, back to it. Okay. And that is people called scribes mm-hmm. were able to read for everyday stuff. And that's a Latin word that means too bright. Right, too right. Not, not Orville and Wilbur right, but right. <laughs> with uh, pencil and paper back then. Now it's ink. Yep. Uh, fun fact, which I'll rabbit trail a little bit. That's here. The word Bible does not appear inside pages of the Bible. Then, right. None Just like the her. word Trinity does not right. show up in the scriptures. Bible, so, Trinity, uh, Tractor, none of them are in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the term Bible didn't show up for a long time. And, uh, well, two, you know, just were not used back in those days. So that's sort of important to be aware of some of those finer trivia points. Because things come up since then to describe what it is. Um we're going to get into faith part now, Bill. I turn it to your Ooh, 66. Nice. Anything yep. else you want? No, no. I think uh, I think getting into that would be just fine. Okay. 
uh, like I said earlier, some 40 people wrote the entire Bible. I say with a smile on my face, because I can't prove it anywhere. I like to believe, and I can, you know, at least discuss it with some authority, that a woman may have written the book of Hebrews. And all joking aside, that's not because she wanted him to make coffee. So he brews. Right. <laughs> okay, so we're not doing that. <clears throat> but maybe one woman had a right. Maybe. Maybe. We simply do not know. But we do know that it is quite old. It's inspired by God. And it takes faith to believe it even though it's getting more and more verified by science. Okay, you're unfrozen. I'm sorry? <laughs> you froze up there for a second. Oh, no. Uh, but it's under the inspiration of God that wrote it. Mm -hmm. And remembering that the later writers didn't always have access to the earlier writings because they didn't. Right. Uh, they may have seen some of the ancient writings before, but it's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that was helping them to write anew, as it were, some of the same things that were in the Old Testament that they didn't really have access to. Right. That's why when you see, when you read, like, some of the stuff that Paul wrote and Peter and, 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 uh, and others, um, sometimes their quotes were not exact of the Old Testament. Because they were going off of memory, and while yes. and and going into into Bill Three's beliefs, this is why I believe the Bible is true, but not necessarily fact. Because uh, um, because there are some thing there are some issues between the New and Old Testament as far as certain things, and uh, um, and there is certain things that we know now that uh, um, that we can show happened or or the results of that uh, um that uh, uh that show that well this might not have been completely fact but it's true and there's a big uh, there's a big difference a big gap between uh between truth and fact um true but, uh, um, i yeah. will give you that without rendering <laughs> my position uh right. for so many yeah. things that we have not been able to fully figure out but I believe it is absolutely true on all of them. Uh, but the Bible has the power to speak God's truth right. to us. And that's what's important. Me and you and you listeners, not just my son and I. And we have to be able to say that we believe that. Right. You know, without faith in the Bible, we can't really establish a good faith in Christianity. It has to be there, and it has to be solid. The Bible is the most documented and reliable book in the world. I said that already. I said earlier, I think I missed over 13,000 ancient copies, a portion of the New Testament alone. The Dead Sea Scrolls have certainly been used, and I know there's an exception Bill referenced earlier about how accurate the Old Testament is. By, uh, yep. And Shall I we tell love them? it. <coughs> Pardon me. Shall we tell them what it is? You may. It is about the height of uh, of Goliath. How tall he is, was, or was. Yes. You know, a, a minor thing, all in all. <laughs> but he uh, was really big. He was really and when big. you have a really big person standing next to a really little person, it's really hard to guesstimate any of it. Right. And then David chopped his head off, so there was really no good accurate measurements. <laughs> they were fighting a battle, so who knows what went on. Right. Nobody brought uh, up in this in this In our book that we're reading from, yes. I really like some of the details she puts in for extra facts, but it's the fact that biblical archeologists helped prove the events in the Bible really happened. 
they're doing that more and more. It's a sciences to studies history by digging up artifacts and old bones, et cetera, to find out some things. Yep. But also modern science does a lot of verification mm -hmm. without ever admitting that they're verifying. Uh, and I will give examples of that. I mean, because it's fun to do. And that is uh, in the book of Job, the Old Testament, it literally has Job describing getting by on the, by the skin of his teeth. Well, in the, back in the 1960s, early, late 60s, early 70s, dental science discovered for the first time that the film that you feel, feel on your teeth in the morning when you wake up is actually skin that grows down from the gums and covers over your teeth, if you have healthy gums. If you don't, that's a different matter. <laughs> uh, but that's a verification a scientific verification that says, guess what? God really does know it all. Uh, there is also a more, much more recent one, and that is from Genesis chapter 1, when God says, let the waters be divided. And now science says that as much as 40 to 60% of all the water on earth came from outside the earth which again shows, you know, that there are separations. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love it because science keeps verifying. And if we look at the Bible thoroughly enough, we see a lot of these answers already showing up. Yes, there are others, but I don't know that we want to take too much time. No, no, not too much but, time. Um, but, but I, I particularly Bible like means, the, uh, the archaeological, the biblical archaeology that finds, uh, that finds mm -hmm. different things like, uh, yes. like the Tel Dan Stila and, uh, um, and that references, uh, uh, the house of David and ver thereby verifying that there was a Davidic dynasty, uh, going on at the time. Um, yep. you know, and, uh, um, and they keep looking and we should keep stuff. paying attention. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And remember, it's Jewish people trying to prove things uh, who are not necessarily at all in favor of Christianity. Yeah. And so we look at it with that enlightenment and go forward still on the faith that Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be and what happened to him was true. Yeah. All right. What's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? One's old and one's new. <laughs> the Bible is divided into two parts for sure. Uh, testament literally means a promise or a covenant agreement. Sorry. Um, God made covenant with the Old Testament. God made a uh, new covenant with the New Testament. Did I say that right? I think so. I just repeated testament too many times. Yeah, you did. Uh, and the old was to the Hebrew people. Bill, do you remember the definition of Hebrew? Uh, no, I don't. Came out of. Okay. Okay. Hebrew people came out of Ere of the Chaldees. His name was Abram. And Sarai changed by God to Abraham and Sarah. And it is their family line in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, it, we have, were shown by Jesus that it's not just the Hebrew people, but all who are spiritually, spiritual believers like Abraham was. And that's important for us to see that it's a spiritual aspect of this whole thing. If we can't have faith in it, we will simply not succeed in living up to God's standards, right. which because are very live... simple. <laughs> well, I was going to say, we can't, we can't live up to God's standards. That's why we need Jesus, because Jesus could. 
and he can yep. uh, and by faith in Jesus Christ uh, we can be wrapped in his righteousness and uh, and yes. thereby be uh, be up to God's up to snuff if you will now i guess we should i should say since i started hebrews coming out of their name also is israelites because of the nation of israel which came through Abraham's grandson, Jacob, when God changed Jacob's name to Israel. So his descendants are Israelites. After King David, after King Solomon, the nation was divided north and south. Right. That's a great story. You should read about it in Kings, but not now. Uh, the southern kingdom was Judah, and the northern kingdom was Samaria. After well, Judah, would become Samaria. I'm sorry. Would become Samaria. Would become Samaria. That's true. For, for a while, it was uh, called Israel. But when Judea or Judah was overrun and captured by the Babylonians, it is at that point in time that they are referred to as Jews. Jews should never be used as a derogatory name. Not anymore. Okay, so don't even go there. It should not be, but it helps you to see. Hebrews, Israelites, Jews are all the people of Abraham, descendants of Abraham. Physical descendants. Physical as opposed descendants. to the spiritual descendants. Uh, and all the rest of us, everyone who's not Jewish, we're all Gentiles. Goyim. Uh, yeah, which is rather actually derogatory. So let's just keep it with Gentiles. <laughs> um, but God's love is the whole purpose of the Bible. It's his story of love for us. I know. Our author described it as God's love story. Uh, that gets pretty hectic, rough to figure out when he's telling the Hebrew people, the Israelites, to destroy entire nations. You know, that, that's a love story. It gets difficult at times. Well, some of that, some of that could have been um, not literal instructions, but rather, rather figuratively, that these people need these people's ways need to be destroyed. Yeah, um, and okay. it, there may have been some uh, some um, what's it called when you over uh, when you overstate something? Um, uh, Overstatement works overstate. pretty good. Yeah, that does work pretty good. Exaggeration. That was uh, the word I was thinking of. But certainly, the fact that they didn't follow through. That was bad. That was bad. They didn't destroy the ways they of the They didn't destroy the false god worships. In right. fact, when we look at even the family with uh, Abraham and Jacob in particular, I know I remember it jumping out, is that he had household gods with him. Yeah. And continually... That's before they even try to get in to the promised land with Jacob and his wives. Um, we have to overcome that. We can overcome that because of our faith in the New Testament. God's agreement, not just with the Jewish people, but with the entire world, including us today. It is... The New Testament starts with the earthly life of Jesus. But if you go back to Genesis 1 around verse 26 and 27, you'll see God speaking to whom? We don't have exact words there, but he says, let us make man in our image. And he wasn't talking to the angels of the cherubim or seraphim. He wasn't talking to the heavenly host. I believe he was talking to the Holy Spirit who shows up right in verse 1 of Genesis 1, but also to the future coming of Jesus where the New Testament, we find out Jesus was in the whole mix from the beginning. 
nothing him, else nothing can be created. Made. Nothing was created that didn't get created by Jesus. Satan can't create anything. And no, I do not believe that there can be an evolution without God at the base. I do believe in Genesis chapter one, where it says, let the earth bring forth right. the plants and the animals and the fish and the birds, not in that order. <laughs> okay, so we have those creations, but everything was Jesus in the mix. And Jesus is the focal point of the entire Bible. And the Old Testament pointing to the New Testament gospels and Acts, the gospels of the earthly life of Jesus, Acts showing primarily the growth of the early church. And then we have the letters, which again, one of those words, it's also called epistles. So if you hear somebody saying the epistle of, it means the letter of, not the gospel. The only problem with that one that anybody would ever should have is John. John, the disciple, wrote the Gospel of John. He also wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. And he also wrote Revelation. But it's really easy to say, ah, oh, the Epistle of John, and immediately go to the Gospel. It's not. It's one of the three letters that are very much toward the end. Let's see. It tells the earthly story of Jesus. Got to really get that in there. Revelation is what God told the Apostle John in a vision about the future. And that's what's the difference between the Old and New Testament. The Old Testament was with the Jewish people and they could not follow through with it. It wasn't enough. And if you can get into the real reads or weeds, as it were, of details, you can see in the Old Testament where God speaks to them and says, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to bring somebody else to save. And that's truly what happens over and over again. Uh, but it is a new covenant that we have. How are we doing on time, Bill? We still got it. We're 47. Well, we have a few a couple extra minutes. Yeah, we have a couple more minutes. We already covered what's the difference between Jew and a Gentile. Yeah. Uh, any person who's not Jewish doesn't matter. To the Jewish people, we're Gentiles. Right. And we talked about how the... I disagree with the author in this one. I believe mm -hmm. that the Gospel of Matthew was originally written in Aramaic. Right. And... Uh, the Old Testament, I don't know how much we have that's actually translated from Aramaic as it's, compared it's a little. to Hebrew. I, I think it's like a couple chapters worth. Oh, yeah? yeah? So we have those points anyway uh, for that. Let's see. Here we go. I know I want this one done right now. <laughs> Which okay. Bible is right for you all individually? The simple and most effective answer is one that you can understand. Unless it's the New World Translation. <laughs> I'm sorry? Unless it's the New World Translation. I think that's what the what the JW is called there. Well, well there yeah, you do have to make sure that it stays focused on Jesus yeah, is the, Christian the Bible. <laughs> only Son of God. Right. And that he, from John 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And I am the Fantastic. Father, one. Now, as I have gotten older, and as it's become available, I highly encourage people to, f first of all, find the translation you like, that you can understand, but also get a Bible that is chronological, mm. written out, in order of occurrence, because the King James Bible is not in chronological order. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you have Bibles in front of you, you can look at the index at the beginning. And I'll give you a couple examples of how chron a chronological Bible is better. 
I mean, we have the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Sounds good, but now it looks like the book of Job, which is much later, okay, was written contemporarily with our time frame, not written, but the time frame as being at the time of Abraham, which is Genesis. So the chronolo chronological Bible does Genesis, Job goes back and finishes Genesis, and then does Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then it does Joshua and Judges and Ruth, which is what you will see in your own index. But then it is, let's see, I'm gonna goof up because I didn't open up the, the, the index to the table of contents. Because then it goes Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, those three books, because that's how many there were. In fact, some people try to say Samuel and Chronicles were written together, all by in one set of parchments. I can't envision that, but still, it's there. But then we have after Chronicles, in the King James table of contents, and many others. It does Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Well, all three of those books take place after the return from Babylon. So I guess they really are in an order, except that Psalms and Proverbs and Isaiah and... Uh, Jeremiah were all before the exile, which means also Lamentations was before the exile. Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther should be much later. That's what I'm trying to get at. So it gets very difficult if you're trying to read the Bible and you go from Second Chronicles and you immediately go into Ezra. It's like, well, where's Isaiah? If you have a chronological Bible, you will have read it during the readings of 2 Kings and therefore 2 Chronicles. Yes. Same thing First, with your... The Kings and Chronicles are kind of simultaneous. And yes, so they, they are kind of. But so are all the writings of yeah. Isaiah and Jeremiah, Lamentations. It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> Actually, you know, most of them. Daniel should be pretty much toward the end, much more to the end than it is, I think, because we have minor prophets also that were preaching and telling people, get your act together or you're going to be overrun by the Babylonians. Yeah. And Daniel's already one of those overrun folks. He's in, he's literally in Babylon when he's writing or when his story takes place. So I really do want to encourage you to do that. When it gets to the New Testament, the chronology is primarily around the life and actions of Paul and his epistle writing, his le writing letters to the different churches. And those are, again, interspersed along with Acts so that when you say, oh, Paul was in Ephesus, and here we have a letter to Ephesus. It's important to be able to see that. And so I really encourage people first to get a Bible that they can understand. And second of all, get it chronological so you can see it the order it happened and experience it better that way. Yep. A good and study Bible looking at our us. clock, Bill, I think we should. Oh, yeah. I think we should end with that. I mean, there really is one more thing here that will only take 30 seconds. Okay. How should you read the Bible? If you're new to Christianity, I highly recommend you start in the middle with the Gospels. And, you know, it's not really in the middle. But start with the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest. And I admit that's my reason for that. 
it, it kind of reads like a like a war report like a war reporter's uh, report. Um, it's very very straightforward, very in the in the rough, um, and uh, um, was likely uh, written by uh, by Mark under the direction of Peter. By John, highly Mark. possible. Uh, but I also say that if you're a hurting individual and you're just trying to find out how to live as a Christian, you should go to the letter of James. It is an excellent roadmap to how to live day by day as a Christian. And then Acts to see how the church grew. And don't forget, though, if you want the Christmas story, you're limited to two. Matthew and Luke. If you want the crucifixion, you can have all four Gospels. Yep. And there's more to follow on that. So just understand that you shouldn't just jump into it because you will burn yourself out when it gets to all the begats and begots of who and who. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just not the right way to start off. I do read the Bible from Genesis through Revelation every year even with some goofs in one of my daily plans that missed some of the Psalms. And I admit that. I believe faithfully that I get it covered during the year. So by all means, find a Bible that will fit you. And you don't have to start at the beginning, but do all the books. And now I am really finished, Bill. <laughs> Really sure? Take it away. Really and truly? Okay. Well, if you've come this far with us, gentle inquisitor, perhaps you will come a little bit further and join us in this family we call Christianity. We do this not with sacrifice because uh, that's been taken care of uh, by Jesus Christ uh, and his death on the cross and resurrection from the grave. And that uh, that sacrifice was good for all uh, for all time. And, uh, and we don't need to do that again. Um, we don't uh, use uh, magical spells or mystical ceremonies because uh, that's not how we roll. Um, the sinner's prayer is not a magic spell. Um, it doesn't automatically get you into heaven. Um, you have to uh, believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord and, uh, um, and treat him as such. Uh, um, he said uh, that uh, those who do his will are his friends. And uh, um, so, uh, so you must follow Jesus uh, throughout your life. And uh, whether you've been a believer for a second or a century, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, continually falling short. Um, and so uh, we, uh, um, we ask that uh, you take this time, if you're an experienced Christian, to, uh, um, to ask for forgiveness for your newer sins. Um, since the last time you asked forgiveness, uh, because we don't need to go and ask for forgiveness for the same thing that we've done over and over and over again. Um, and uh, so uh, those who are new believers, um, say the sinner's prayer with me as long as it's uh, as long as it's expressing what's in your heart. Um, the exact words are not important because it doesn't show up in the Bible anywhere. Talk about another thing that's not in the Bible. Um, and uh, if you are an experienced Christian, then uh, um, then take the time, uh, like my father does, to ask for forgiveness uh, for your newer sins. So uh, so here we go. Dear Lord, Dear Lord, I am a sinner. Cleanse me of my wickedness. Show me how to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And teach me how to love my neighbor as myself. Help uh, guide my steps along the path you would have me take in this life. And help me to do the work you have for me to do in the building of your kingdom. Come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Indeed. Well, welcome to the uh, to the family of Christ, new Christians. 
And uh, good job, uh, experienced Christians, with uh, with seeking forgiveness for uh, for the wrong things you have done. Um, let's see. Uh, now that you've done that, uh, you need to uh, go and find yourself a Bible believing church with a Bible preaching pastor and a lot of strong Christians who will help you figure out the next steps along your path. Hopefully, uh, those will include coming uh, to see us again uh, on our next show. Um, our next uh, next Outing is uh, YWL Online's totally approachable Bible study for all. And, uh, we are still going through the book of Judges. We are in Judges 17. Yeah, Judges 17. Yeah. And uh, so uh, go ahead and read 17, 18, and 19 just to make sure you're staying ahead of us and uh, can uh, join in the conversation because uh, um, we'd love to hear from you. Then on Thursday, let's see, then the next episode of of Not Quite After Midnight is somewhere here. Oh, it's got to open up again. <laughs> oh, let's see. Upcoming. Let's see. We have Donna Cuisenberry, who is a... Publish oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Donna Quisenberry signed up for somebody and hasn't told me who yet. Um, we also have Shelly Howard, who uh, is a educational consultant who helps uh, their family send their teenager to college uh, without losing their mind or their money. Um, I've spoken with Shelly before and uh, definitely uh, um, an interesting person. So uh, we should have an interesting uh, conversation uh, there between the three of us, uh, whoever the third person might be. And uh, then, of course, uh, a week from today would be Anything Can Happen Saturday. But uh, since I'll be driving, it'll be kind of difficult to, uh, to do another show. Um, yes. So we're going to go dark. And uh, so you'll get two Tuesdays in a row. Uh, <laughs> and then the, the, follow the following Tuesday, of course, will be in... Uh, will be Two people in Missouri, probably. Three people. Rudy will be Three here too. Three people in Missouri. Three people. That's right. Rudy will be here too. So, uh, um, so be sure to tune in. If you've missed any previous episodes, uh, please uh, go uh, scroll down on the page you're on and listen or watch uh, whatever you happen to be doing, and uh, get caught up so you can be on the same page as the rest of us. Um, this uh, this book has been really interesting. I think uh, it'll continue to. To, uh, to be so as a good topical study for us, uh, uh, for especially for well, new Christians and, uh, and people who, uh, um, who haven't really gone in depth yet, who are still milk fed, as it were. Um, so uh, with that, um, let's see, Rudy stepped out on me. So, uh, um, so I'll ask you, Pop, um, do you have anything to say to the nice people? Yes, nice people absolutely have a fabulous weekend. Try church tomorrow. If you are not a regular attender, please go. But Christ-centered always. Yep. And just have a beautiful weekend. And God's blessing from Branson, Missouri. Yes. And waka, waka, waka with the Lord. Um, that's, for that's for Rudy. That's for Rudy. Um, yes, uh, um, yeah, God's blessings also from Santa Ana, California. Uh, remember to, uh, uh, well, be safe, uh, first of all. Uh, remember to wash your hands and watch the ending credits. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bald Spots Productions. I would like to thank my producer, my beloved mother, Eileen Hatch. I, of course, am your humble host. I would also like to thank my co-host, my beloved father, Chaplain Bill Hatch. I'd really like to thank my Ed McMahon, Rudy Corlew. Yes. Support the show if you feel so led. Over on Patreon.com, we are known as Bald Spots Pro. Don't you dare miss Not Quite After Midnight. You can find us on Facebook and wherever fine podcasts are offered. Be sure to like, comment, and share. You know, subscribe, follow, whatever it is you've got to do to kick that algorithm into gear and help us reach more people. 
If you or someone you know needs support now, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. 988 is the Suicide and Mental Health Crisis Lifeline here in the States.